Many Japanese can't believe it's been that long since that day. A magnitude 9 earthquake struck the northeast 18 months ago. That triggered a tsunami that washed over cities and towns up and down the coast. Nearly 16,000 people died. About 3,000 went missing. The disaster sparked a triple meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Workers have been struggling ever since to bring it under control. Decommissioning the plant will take about 40 years. Their biggest challenge is how to remove spent fuel rods from reactor pools. Their work is hampered by dangerously high radiation inside the reactors. The operator aims to start extracting melted uranium fuel from reactors 1, 2 and 3 within 10 years. But first, employees of Tokyo Electric Power Company have to locate cracks in the containment vessels to fill the vessels with water and cool down the fuel. They're using endoscopes and robots to do the job. A hydrogen explosion severely damaged reactor 4. That left it fragile and possibly unstable. Workers have been performing tests in order to remove the rods in December next year. But debris is still scattered in the pool, and that could slow down the operation. TEPCO managers have had a tough time attracting workers. They say they'll run out of help in five years unless they can find a way to reduce workers' exposure to radiation. TEPCO managers have had a tough time attracting workers. They say they'll run out of help in five years unless they can find a way to reduce workers' exposure to radiation. Science and technology experts in Japan want the government to rethink how it deals with the byproduct of atomic energy, nuclear waste. They argue against a current plan to store the waste deep underground for tens of thousands of years. They instead want it to be kept in temporary locations. Science Council of Japan President Takashi Onishi presented a proposal to Atomic Energy Commission Chair Shunsuke Kondo. The government asked the council in 2000 2010 to review its disposal plan. The initial idea was to bury highly radioactive nuclear waste more than 300 meters underground. But opposition from people living near a candidate burial sites has deadlocked the plan. The Science Council's proposal says the public must agree on nuclear policies before disposal sites can be selected. Council members flag Japan's high seismic and volcanic activity. They say current technology can't predict which locations will remain stable for tens of thousands of years. So they suggest temporarily storing nuclear waste for decades to hundreds of years, either above or below ground. The scientists say technological development and public consensus should take place during that time. <laughs> Japan's leaders have finalized plans for a new nuclear watchdog. The planned commission will be largely independent from their government. <laughs> its creation comes more than a year and a half after the disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Cabinet members decided to inaugurate the watchdog on Wednesday of next week. The commission will replace the Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency. That agency is controlled by the Economy, Trade and Industry Ministry, which has promoted nuclear power. The agency was criticized for a lack of independence following last year's disaster. TEPCO sets up independent panel to seek advice. The operator of the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it has set up a third-party panel to improve nuclear safety and corporate management. Tokyo Electric Power Company says the panel launched on Tuesday will make proposals for improvement in safety and oversee the utilities reform efforts. The move is a response to harsh criticism by the investigation panels created by the government and the Diet. After last year's Fukushima nuclear accident, members of the panel include Dale Klein, a former chairman of the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and lawyer Masafumi Sakurai, who was on the Diet panel. The first meeting is scheduled for early next month. TEPCO says it will use the panel's 
recommendations to draw up an action plan by the year end to improve safety and transparency. TEPCO, President Naomi Harrow says a company that is qualified to operate nuclear plants has to take measures against problems which could cause an accident. TEPCO's turnaround plan assumes the restart of a nuclear plant in Niigata Prefecture next April at the earliest, but the feasibility of the plan is being called into question in the face of strong opposition by local communities. So who is this Dale Klein guy on the so-called independent committee? Let's see. Dr. Klein, 62, served as chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission from July 2006 to May 2009, and thereafter as a commissioner until March 30, 2010. I left many links in the description box below for you to follow this character's tracks working for the NRC. Groups rally against new nuclear regulator citizens groups opposing nuclear power generation have held a rally in Tokyo to protest the appointments for a new nuclear regulator. The five-member body will be launched next week. Members of civic groups from Tokyo and other areas, including Fukushima Prefecture, held up banners in front of the industry ministry on Tuesday afternoon. The protesters are especially against the selection of the head of the new commission. They say Shunichi Danaka is not qualified for the post because he has been promoting nuclear energy for years. A woman from Fukushima. Fukushima Prefecture says the groups have been calling for the repeal of the appointments for the past month. She says it is unacceptable to select the panel after the diet went into recess. A member of a Tokyo Civic Group says he is against all five appointments because nuclear promoters cannot adequately regulate the industry. In the evening, hundreds of people form a human chain around the industry ministry. They say they will continue continue their protests because the appointments have not been officially confirmed. National and local government officials are also struggling to clean up radioactive contamination. The central government is responsible for decontaminating the evacuation zone around the plant in 11 municipalities in Fukushima Prefecture. But the cleanup has been slow to start. Only Tamura City has begun the process. The government has taken time to classify the zone according to levels of contamination. The government is subsidizing the cleanup in 104 municipalities outside the zone. Some local governments have begun preliminary surveys. But the disaster damaged roofs and walls in many houses. Some residents are demanding that their homes be repaired before decontamination. Government officials have refused slowing down the cleanup. 25 municipalities have yet to even draw up decontamination plans. They can't decide on the areas or on how to remove radioactive substances. Commercial fishing in the Tohoku region has been extended on an experimental basis 18 months after the nuclear accident. But restarting full-scale fishing off Fukushima may take some time because high levels of radiation have been detected in fish caught in other prefectures. Following last year's nuclear accident in Fukushima, a fishing ban was imposed for safety reasons. But in June, commercial fishing was restarted on an experimental basis. On Monday, almost 18 months after the nuclear accident, fishery cooperatives in the Tohoku region began fishing 10 types of marine resources, including crab and squid. They intend to sell the produce if tests show no contamination. But a cod caught in Aomori Prefecture early in August had 132.7 becquerels of radioactive cesium per kilogram. That's 1.3 times the government safety limit. Radiation 380 times the limit was detected in a rock trout caught off Fukushima in early August. Black sea bream caught off Miyagi Prefecture in July registered 33 times over the limit. Only low levels of radioactive cesium have been detected in seawater in the area. Experts suggest that cesium has accumulated on the seabed and is now being transferred to some kinds of fish that eat sandworms. 
A marine science professor at Tokyo University says the cause of the contamination should be studied according to the fish species to get an idea of the spread of the contamination. India is promoting nuclear power as a means of feeding its growing economy, but there is a strong opposition. One anti-nuclear protester died during a demonstration on Monday and others have gone on hunger strike. NHK World's Neha Gupta has the story. The clash between demonstrators and police occurred near the Kudankulam nuclear power plant in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Police confronted local residents who are against plans to start operations at the facility, resulting in injuries on both sides. The protest spilled over to a neighboring district where people gathered around a police station to protest the handling of anti-nuclear demonstrations. Police opened fire on the residents, killing one. This prompted around 30 demonstrators to begin a 48-hour hunger strike on Monday. They, along with their supporters, are slamming police action and criticizing the government's decision to go ahead with plans to start operating the nuclear plant. The incident has affected us deeply and we severely condemn it. They inflicted violence on us by throwing tear gas and beating us. They attacked us and forced us to stop our protest. The facility was scheduled to begin operations last fall. But that plan has been delayed by an anti-nuclear movement which gained momentum following last year's accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. India, like other emerging economies in Asia, is having difficulties securing enough energy for its growing economy. In July, massive blackout hit the country for two consecutive days. More than half the country, including the capital, New Delhi, was left without power at one point during the incident. The Indian government claims nuclear power is needed to meet the growing demands for electricity and maintains that the Kudankulam plant is safe, but people living near the plant are not convinced. The friction between them is growing even stronger now that one protester has been killed. Neha Gupta, NHK World, New Delhi. Japanese scientists say they've made a discovery that could bring hope to men suffering from infertility. They found the new method by creating sperm in infertile mice. Takehiko Ogawa leads a team of researchers from Yokohama City University. They put stem cells in a substance that stimulates white blood cells together. Then they injected that into cells from mice testicles. The new cells grew and were able to generate sperm in about 50 days. The scientists use the sperm to create babies born through in vitro fertilization. First, we need to continue our study to do the same with human sperm. And if we achieve that, we could use the same method for the diagnosis and also the treatment of men's infertility. Their findings will be published in the online issue of the U.S. science magazine, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences.